as someone that has been with my hero since day one, since the first chapter came out years ago, like when I first read the chapters, I, I remember it clear as day when I first started reading this series around July of 2014. I remembered being just blown away by just how refreshing the art style of My Hero Academia was. I was excited about All Might's character. I was excited about Isaku's character being very analytical. He was someone that reminded me a little bit of Batman in a way, since he was quirkless, to eventually kind of being an underdog and getting a really strong quirk, you know, for All Might's quirk, you know, one for all. And it's been a very long time coming that this video needs to be made. And I've kind of been in more of denial. I've tried to kind of say here and there that the series has had its ups and downs in the past like year or so, maybe even longer. But with what came out tonight, I can't even just, I can't even deny it. I can't. The only words that really come to mind when it comes to describing chapter 364 that's going to be coming out officially this weekend, at least according to these leaks, it's shit. So, let's let's talk about it. When I read these leaks, and you can pause the video and look yourself if you want to kind of see what's being said here, and you can see it's on the Reddit of My Hero. When I saw these, the first instinct I had in my head, I was like, I hope these aren't real. But then I realized... It's probably real, 100% is real, before I saw the spoiler image, which I'll show in a minute. But, um, I was reminded that this series was a shonen. Now, I don't mean that in the bad way. There's a lot of good shonens out there. There's so many good ones that even use so many cliches, and it's just fantastic. Sometimes you can really enjoy a good cliche shonen that's just stereotypical. But the point is, is that My Hero Academia tries to break outside of that formula, tries to do different things. And Horikoshi Sensei, since the very beginning of My Hero Academia, has shifted a lot of the cliches you would see in Shonen onto the villains. For instance, like character surviving, or friendship power-ups, etc. He's applied that to the villains of the story. He's never really applied it to his heroes much. He has in recent times, obviously, and there is slight examples here and there, but overall, never to such an extreme fashion until basically the whole war arc at the end, the, the main war arc we had when Shigaraki woke up. And I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, the fact that Bakugo is coming back, I'm not necessarily completely shocked, but there was a part a part really deep inside of me that truly wanted to believe that Bakugo was going to stay dead. Not because I hate Bakugo's character. I think he's a great character. I have constantly talked about Bakugo over the years, ever since basically 2014 when I started reviewing the manga. I've talked about Bakugo's character, his development, his slow progression, and everything. I, I've loved Bakugo, and there's a reason he's always been basically number one on the character popularity charts. It speaks for itself. Bakugo is a really solid character. And so, since this is technically the final arc, like what we've been in, you'd think that there would be a lot of things that matter. Characters would die. And I want to make sure that this is fundamentally clear. Death of a character doesn't necessarily mean good writing or a good story. If you kill off too many characters, the audience or the readers can become detached, distance himself from the cast of characters, and not care too much anymore about said characters within the story. A Kamiga Kill is a very good example of this. I enjoy Kamiga Kill to a certain extent, but when I read the manga a long time ago and then watched the anime, it was a series that just had this habit of killing characters off left and right. And if you kill off too many characters, it doesn't mean it's automatically good because it's edgy and the writer kills characters. It's how you write said character deaths, how they matter. Like, I, this is old, it's like 10 plus to like 12 years at this point in terms of spoilers, but I'm just gonna say spoilers for Naruto, Jiraiya's death. Jiraiya's death for Naruto, like, people like to meme on Naruto, like, in the final art, to Boruto, well, yes, we all meme, even myself, I memed on the series. 
But if there's one thing that holds a lot of meaning to me, at least for what Kishimoto did with, let's say, Naruto, is that he kept Jiraiya's death permanent. Jiraiya is, at least from my knowledge, permanently dead, and he was not even ever resurrected with, like, the resurrection jutsu for the final war arc of Naruto's series. And I respected that. It made Jiraiya's death feel very impactful, important, a huge turning point for the entire story and that arc in general. It l leaves a lasting impression to me the way Kishimoto wrote Jiraiya's character. And so death in that way is really impactful. And if you have a very important and powerful character that's been there for a while dying, and it wasn't just used there for, let's just say, the purpose of dying, and that was the whole point of their character, it can lead to some one of the most emotional and best moments of an entire story. And obviously, if Bakugo legitimately died, and it was the end, it could have led to something fundamentally ridiculous for this final arc. Just... For fan theories sake alone, just throwing theories out there, and I'm not upset my theories aren't going to come true or anything like that, but I'm just throwing things out there what could have been now that we know it's not going to be. For instance, imagine if Izuku would have arrived on the scene and saw Bakugo's lifeless corpse on the ground. He's dead. He's, he's done. You see him literally no breath. He's literally just a husk. And then... Shigaraki slash All for One literally has pretty much almost killed everyone, or they're all struggling for their lives. And, you know, Izuku lands on the scene and sees that. You know how emotional he's going to get getting to see Bakugo, basically his best friend, dead on the ground. His anger, his rage, could he actually contain himself and maintain his sense of being a hero? Or would he try to take Shigaraki's life. That would harbor so much meaning and a huge message to really show kind of that heroes and villains are two sides of the same coin and sometimes they can cross over that gray boundary into the darkness and vice versa. I would have loved that. They could have done that with Toka, or, you know, or to, not Toka, Toga, and basically Toga's character when she was going through her issues of finding out what twice is death and all that, you know, Toga could have went through a change and became a hero or somewhat of a better person. And obviously that hasn't happened and her entire character has been thrashed as I talked about, but we could have saw that and then we could have saw Izuku kind of slowly descend into darkness and that would have been cool or at least almost push that threshold like a Joker Batman moment. It would have been insane, but obviously that's not going to happen. We're not going to get those type of things because obviously, you know, it's not happening. Another thing that bugs me about this is that the person that is apparently healing Bakugo is Ed Shot. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Edshot as a character. He's got a cool design, but he's basically a ninja. That's it. He, he's a ninja, uses a little bit of strings, etc. Turns his body into, like, strings or whatever. He's cool, but that's about it. And, yes, we've seen him be able to, like, stab people with his string or whatever, whatever his quirk actually is. But the point is, there's never been any indication with his abilities that he is capable of literally turning himself into a freaking heart to be able to save someone. Like, he's, I'm guessing, giving up his life and turning himself into a heart to save Bakugo, but it's like, Edshot, I'm gonna keep it real. We don't care about him. Yeah, there's probably some fans out there of Edshot, but let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things of characters, Edshot is literally meaningless. He's not that important of a character. He isn't. He could be a part of the 10 top 10 heroes, whatever. It doesn't matter. He has not had a crazy amount of screen time, let's say like Endeavor or, or, or Bakugo. He's not a really important or impactful character. He hasn't really had a major connection with our characters. So him sacrificing himself for Bakugo, that's crap. It's crap. It's legitimate crap. That's exactly what it is. It's like a big dump was just placed on my table. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's crap. That, that, that's literally what it looks like. It smells like crap. It looks like crap. And... I'm just like, this is, that's not good. And here's, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna show you the spoiler image. This is Edshot, showing his face and turning himself into a heart to revive Bakugo, and that's how the chapter ends. That is how the chapter ends. Now, obviously, the deed isn't done, and Bakugo isn't breathing. So there is, if you want to have copium, there is an, a, 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 even if there's a 1% chance, if you want to have copium, Shigaraki be like, nah, this ain't happening, and just smack the crap out of Edshot, kill him or whatever, and then Bakugo stays dead. That'd be cool, yeah, but I'm not gonna, I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not, I'm not. There, there's no business in doing this, because it, 
What's going on here is typical grade A creating fake tension to get people hyped up for the next chapter and then bringing the character back and be like, yeah, my character's back. And that's that's not how I feel. I, I'm just more disappointed because this is the final arc. And as I've already stated, death doesn't mean good. But once again, things do need to matter. And if you have constant fake outs, this goes for any series. I'm not just picking on My Hero Academia. I'm talking about any series. It could be My Hero, Black Clover, One Piece. It can be Berserk. I don't care what series. All I'm saying is if you do continuous fake outs, it's garbage. That's, that, that's the end of it. Unless you give me a 100% good, really good, really good explanation and you do it maybe once i'll let it slide and the thing is this isn't the first time that horikoshi has done this and I, I'm, I'm just gonna pull it up I'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna pull it up gran torino death like you you literally see people talking about gran torino death I, i'll probably find a manga image here someone seeing it literally shigaraki impels you can literally see it he impels Gran Torino through the freaking chest. Nobody's surviving that. You're not. But obviously, he lives. He survives. And there's no business for Gran Torino really surviving that. There wasn't. He should have died. He hasn't had any significance at all in this arc. He should have died. But obviously, he didn't. So the point I'm trying to make is this... This, this garbage isn't the first time it's happened. And I'm upset because it's technically the exact same thing. Getting pierced in the freaking chest and they survive somehow. It's like... Yeah. <sighs> Just that. Uh, I'm sad and I'm angry. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed and I'm angry because it's like, I love My Hero Academia. I legitimately love My Hero Academia. I have talked about this series since day one. But look what it has done. It, it, it's so sad. It's just... Because this isn't the, just the beginning of just the garbage that My Hero Academia has become. It's just, it's spiraled, and it's continuously spiraled downhill. And it's sad. It's so sad. And I don't really know why. And what I mean by that is, is that we, this series is kind of, if you really want to pinpoint it, is technically in the war arc with this whole thing. That Gran Torino didn't really die, not a lot of people really died, and it could be kind of slid since it was technically a precursor to the final arc. But even then, things started looking a little bit odd or different around this time. But what really, really, and it's when I really started to talk about My Hero in slightly a negative light, is when Star and Stripe came back, or not came back, came into the story, and she died within five chapters. Like, this character was really cool. Star and Stripe, I remember talking about her, I was hyped, I was like, yo, this is a pretty freaking cool character. And then Star and Stripe dies in five chapters, like five to six chapters. That's all Star and Stripe was within the story, no pre-establishment, nothing. The character killed off. And this is the exact reason what I just talked about with deaths not necessarily be being a good thing. Killing off characters doesn't automatically mean it's good. The thing is, is that Star and Stripe as a character, her quirk and everything, was super freaking interesting. This character that admired All Might, potentially studied under All Might, so much lore with All Might and the, the other parts of the world, part of the United States, etc. It was really cool. There was a lot of world building and there could have been an entire arc about this. It would have been amazing to see Star and Stripe try to talk with Izuku, meet up with All Might, etc. That would have been fantastic. But obviously that did not happen because Horikoshi killed her off in five to six chapters. And this shows, once again, that, you know, when you have stuff like this, you don't really feel attached to them. None of us probably really cared about Star and Stripe's death. Like, we didn't get emotional she died and started weeping and crying. We more or less got disappointed because the character was amazing. Like, oh, this is a really cool character. Interesting introduction. There's so much here. And then Horiko, she kills her off, and that's about it. And just to put an arbitrary time limit. That's really all it was. The arc was just straight up useless. It was a worthless arc. And I talked about this in a video, so I'm not going to reinstate what I said. But the point is, is that... Ever since technically this moment, My Hero Academia has been spiraling to constant rushed moments to trying to get 
full speed to the final arc to Toga's character being completely just obliterated and having like her entire psyche and everything just destroyed where we didn't get to see a lot of development with her or her conclusion with Izuku etc it's just there's a lot of things that's happened with the story like to Spinner and what's going on with Spinner to just like there's, there's just a lot. There's there's honestly just a lot of garbage. There's just a cesspool of stuff, and I've talked about it in some negative lights over the past year plus, but I've been trying to be lenient. I really try to be lenient. Like, even the traitor stuff. The traitor reveal of My Hero Academia. Like, like the traitor reveal. Do you, do you guys remember that? How bad that was? Oh, you know, Naval Laser Boy. A Aoyama. He, he, he's, he's a traitor. Okay. Invisible girl, potentially traitor. Hortikoshi does a fake out. It really isn't a visible girl. It's it's Aoyama. Okay, fine. Let's not do nothing with that plot point. Let's settle it in about a chapter. Two chapters. That's it. I mean it has no relevance at all. It's like, oh Hortikoshi got in his bright idea. It's like, oh yeah, I did set that up, didn't I? I better settle this before everything. Let's let's wrap it up in two chapters. And it's just like he's <sighs> No hate to Hortikoshi. Like, I respect his writing. I love my hero still. But this is crap. It's crap. This is crap. It's crap. That's my opinion on it. It's crap. Obviously, things can change. Next chapter comes out. Yeah, but I don't really have much hope. I'm not going to be drinking that copium this week because it's like... Yeah. Wow. I'm just... I'm going to end it at that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a like. Chibi out.